Sub subs, so I finally got the quest update firmware 9.0. So let's pick around and see what's new and check out the new features. So I'm clicking on this big learn more button to check out the patch notes. Okay, so here we are. First we got Pass Through Plus, and this is supposed to improve the representation of the real world around you by enhancing estimations of depth, size, and distance of objects in your real world environment. I had trouble recording the Pass Through camera, because when I left my boundary the screen just went black in the recording, but I am actually impressed at how much less disorienting the Pass Through camera is now. It determines the distance of things a lot better, and the objects aren't distorted anymore. It's an awesome feature because now it's more plausible to leave the boundary to take care of stuff without taking off the headset. I could have sworn there was supposed to be a pass through on demand by double clicking the oculus button, but it doesn't say anything here in the patch notes, there's nothing in the settings about it, and it didn't work for me when I tried. So maybe that's a future update. But next on the patch notes list, they mention they re-added 3 doff mode, which is essentially just turning off the camera tracking altogether. Oddly enough, the toggle was not automatically in my settings list. I was looking around for a while thinking maybe I'm just dumb, but it wasn't there. I had to purposely put the quest in total darkness to trigger the prompt manually that asks you if you want to continue without tracking. From there, the setting appears in the menu and you can turn it on or off from that point forward. Strange that it would require that to make the setting toggle switch appear in the first place, but hey, now we know. I never had a 3 degree of freedom headset before, so I was kind of playing around with it and quickly realized that A, not being able to move your controllers in 3D space sucks, and B, not being able to move your head forward and back is disorienting and made me kind of sick. So I completely understand now why Oculus decided to kill off 3 doff Go. It's just not good. Well, unless in the specific use case like it's supposed to be used for, like if you're in the dark trying to watch a movie, or if you're in the backseat of a car with the quest, which it infamously does not work in. Otherwise, I'm never going to use this feature, but it's great to have it. Now we get to fiddle around with Go apps. So right away I noticed there was a drop down on the library menu, where you can switch back and forth from Quest games and Go games. I just got Angus on my phone using the mobile Oculus app before getting the update, just so I had something to tinker around with. Weirdly though, there's no in-headset store for Go. You're only able to download or purchase Go games from your phone or PC, and then go to your library in headset and they'll show up for download. Maybe that's something they're going to be adding in the future? I don't know. Even though there was no Go specific store, I thought maybe they could have been in the Quest store just hiding or something. So I double checked by searching for games I knew would be on there, and nothing. Really weird, but I guess it's not a huge issue to buy games off your phone, when I really don't plan to do that much anyways, until better games show up at least. Games load up just normally like they would on a native Quest library, easy and seamless, no hoops to jump through once you've already got them downloaded. It does say here that if you already have purchased Go games before, they should automatically show up in your library for download, which is a nice touch. So the next four supposed additions, I couldn't find in the settings menu at all. I even tried resetting the headset, and they still weren't there. The first one of these was the notification settings. It says, pretty simply, that you just go to settings, go to the notification section, and adjust the toggles. However, for me, there was no notification section in the settings. So I thought maybe it was telling me this backwards, and I have to go to the notifications section, and there will be a settings tab somewhere, but that was also not the case. I scoured the menus and just couldn't find it. And then there's a new supposed manual updates feature. It says that you can just go to the about page and there should be a software update section where you can manually check for an update. But I didn't see that either. It just looked exactly the same as it always does. Maybe it'll pop up when the new update arrives? Or maybe the problem is that I have auto update turned on on my phone? Either way, I'm glad that it's now an option, even though I can't seem to figure out how it works myself. And the final main addition that I couldn't find that's supposed to be in there is new experiments. It says that there should be a new options on the experiments page in the settings, but when I went to the page, it was just not there. All I could find was the Bluetooth connectivity setting, which has always been there. They're promoting the new feature called People You May Know as an experimental setting where it just does the usual social media thing where it suggests people you have friends in common with or perhaps you know them on Facebook or something. This is great to connect with people who you may not have known owned a quest. There's a few other miscellaneous things in the patch notes that I can't really test out myself, like a new feature that shows you when friends beat your high score on Beat Saber, the notification will apparently come through your headset as well as on the app, and the remote wiping of a quest I no longer have access to, which I don't need to use at this time and I pray to god that I never will, but it's actually a really cool feature because if your quest gets stolen and your credit card info and everything is on that, it's awesome to be able to wipe it clean from your PC or phone. 
And finally, if you live in the EU, you're probably gonna have a few extra steps to authenticate your card. I'm located in the US, so I don't have to deal with this one either. And that's really it. I'm a little concerned about the few settings that were just completely absent, but maybe they're doing that weird Oculus thing like they did last time where they're just slowly rolling out each section separately? I really hope so, because some of these features I'd really like to be able to use, like the notification settings for example. But what's your thoughts on the firmware update? Exciting? Boring? Revolutionary? Let me know in the comments! But as always, love ya and we'll catch up next time!